Hi everyone, it's Jen and Paula, three at three on solar PV. Once again, I'm Jennifer Runyon, Chief Editor of Renewable Energy World. And I'm Paula Mintz, Chief Market Research Analyst, SPV Market Research. Cool, so we've got three topics today, three minutes each. Our topics are gonna be solar city, uh, net metering, and then some very low tenders that happened this week. So, Paula, let's start with Solar City's recent announcement. What do they got? Oh, which announcement are you talking about, Jen? So well, many announcements, so little time. Well, you were looking at their um, their earnings call. Oh yes, oh yes. Well, what struck me there is that uh, Mr. Musk was talking excitedly about the company's upcoming BIPV product, which I find interesting, given that they are not, you know, their factory in uh, New York is not operating. It's going to have to go through pilot scale anyway, so they don't have a commercial product now. And what I find really interesting is you're announcing a new product ahead of the product that you have yet to release huh. when you're not commercial anyway, when you're not manufacturing anything, when all you have is really sort of pilot, some pilot scale in Fremont, California. How is that possible? I, they, just, uh, I just don't know. But they keep getting more money. I think they kept getting more money, and maybe it works with Tesla, sorry to be snide, to announce a new release when your others are delayed, but PV is kind of a different industry, mm. although um, it's probably still not to, uh, not good to offer, you know, to announce new product releases when uh, the old one isn't out yet. Still so, isn't even out yet. Again, yeah. again, I find it uh, fascinating. I'm not sure the same thing will work in solar as work as works with cars because but just from everything I know about manufacturing to announce a new product that by the way would be more expensive to manufacture than a normal panel. Um, so BIPV way more expensive than the rectangle we like to pr we like to produce. And aside from that, you know maybe they would should look into thin films if they're going to look into BIPV. That's perfect, 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 and it is a niche. Yeah. Films. Well, actually, but, I thought it was. It's not a. It's not Slavo's. Slavo is not a thin film. It yeah. is not a thin film. It is not anything right now. But when it is something someday, it will be crystalline. Okay. So they've announced a BIPV product. It, I don't. They've not given very many details. They're not talking about timelines, costs, okay. etc. For their factory, <laughs> it's not functioning. I think they still have equipment delays. So. It's 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 fascinating. They've announced, <clears throat> excuse me, a new product before the release of the first product. Yeah. Well, we'll keep our eyes on that. Let's see what what else is there to say? What can I say? Right. Okay. What are we gonna do? We're moving on. What are we gonna do about All right, net metering? Moving on. I'm ready. So I have been thinking a lot about net metering, and I just filmed my letter from the editor for the July for the September October issue, and I have the same question: What are we gonna do about net metering? So in my mind, it's gonna to have to involve time of use rates. Agree or disagree? All right. So that for me is I'm gonna bring it right back to what is becoming honestly a favorite topic of mine, and that's the end user. Okay. So we as an industry cannot forget the end user for a couple of reasons. The best reason is they're part of our industry. They bought a system. Let's talk about residential. They stuck it on their roof or yeah. since not all residential is on roof next to their house. Okay. And they're, they're part of us. So we deserve to include their interests and their point of view in everything we do. Mm -hmm. The other reason is we need lobbying strength, and there's more of us than the, them than us. So they're part of our – bring them into our tent for one reason we should. For another reason, it makes us stronger together. So I'll, I think I've told this anecdote before. In my little neighborhood, when they switched to time of use, and net, there was great celebration in California when net metering was extended, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the end user was not really brought into that discussion. So legacy system owners believed that they were grandfathered in, and they are, yay, whoopee. But they didn't realize that their you know, time of use rates are all going to be shoved into new time of use rates with a different peak. So all of their economics changed. Even the legacy users are very right. upset. Example, across the street neighbor, his true up used to be $200. Now he was offered a choice between 600 and 900 dollars. 
So mm-hmm. that's an economic change. Based so on yes, time of use. yes, right. we need to be fair in time of use, fees, etc., to everyone, and that means a real clear look at the legacy users, legacy system owners, and lessees to take a look at their economics. What are we changing for them? Sure. And then we need a discussion with everybody. So I agree but with the caveat that time of use needs to be fair to everybody, including the end user. Okay, right. I mean, so one question I have, and I don't have a clear answer on this, is so if you have time of use rates and net metering, does that mean when you're exporting during peak, you're getting paid peak prices? Well, it depends on what the negotiated rate for you is. Right, and it's different for every state. In Colorado, I believe they just stated that it is, that you will get peak rates when you're exporting during peak time. But you're also paying peak rates. You're not paying retail. Most of the movement is away from retail. That's another problem with net metering changes. Right. Um, so in the early days of net metering, a very long time ago, since I've been around for 20 years in this industry, eek am I old, um, it, it really what happened is you just kept – they. They essentially credited you, and you kept rolling it over, rolling yeah. it over, rolling it over. And at some point, typically the uh, utility just absorbed the excess that you'd been rolling over, rolling over, rolling over. And there was uh, some formula based on avoided cost, which differs state by state by state. I've written about this for you. Okay. Um, so it was it was kind of a muddle. And then it moved a little bit towards the retail rate and crediting on mar- whatever market rate is. And now it's kind of swinging back towards avoided cost or the value of solar, which nobody has set nobody up a, a appropriate value on, or market rates, and nobody understands what that is. So right now it's just really up for discussion on what you're going to value. So yeah. if you're exporting during peak, then, yeah, you should, in my, in my opinion, if you, it's, an act, it's, a, it's commerce, right? Yeah. If I'm selling electricity to you, the utility, and you are using it, then you need to compensate me at a rate that we agree on. Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't lose money in the deal. And that's really the problem. Are they losing money in the deal? Right. Yep. Okay, our three minutes are up. We have to move to the next Whoa. one. Low tenders. Okay, so yeah. Chile, this, this week... Um, there, uh, there was a solar project in Chile. There was some bids. They came in under thirty dollars a megawatt hour for a project, for a solar project that was a hundred megawatts. Uh huh. Will that get built? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? First of all, they just had to pass a law in Chile so they could build transmission because they're, you know, have inadequate transmission. Yeah. Second of all, already in some oversaturated areas during peak periods, solar is worth zero or negative. Mm. So will that get built? I don't know. I've seen over time lots of big plants fall apart because who's going to pay for the transmission a lot of times? And then maybe there's just not enough money. Um, when you consider, when you bring into the mix curtailment, which will happen, um, the need to build the transmission, who's going to pay for it? Right now, it doesn't look like developers will have to, but th- that's the trend, you know, mm-hmm. developers paying for or getting in for transmission, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Will it be built? Will it be profitable if it's built? I don't think that low bid is enough to support the building of a quality 100 megawatt system. I don't either. And so maybe it won't get built. Yeah. Maybe it will get built and fail. That I mean, is my concern. So I just feel like I, I imagine these, these sort of like macho bidders going, you know, I can beat that price. And it's just a number. And I, I just don't know if it's reality. I, and I don't know what's happening. Are they banking on the fact that the, the – Technology is going to keep dropping in price by the time they actually get to build this thing? I mean, they're probably banking on that a little. Yeah. Um, there, there are some, you know, earlier this year in the U.S., there was some very old Chinese product that was being sold out of inventory. Remember, I've written about that. Mm-hmm. that we, we, yeah. It's yeah. not one-on-one. You buy it, you sell it, you install it, right? One-on-one. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not that seamless. Some no. stuff sits in inventory for a very long time. There were some older Chinese modules from an off-brand uh, manufacturer being resold at 37 cents dropped to 35 percent and i think it even dropped lower than that so you know it all depends how cheap are they buying it 
But, you know, so there's a little bit of arbitrage there if you want to look at it that way. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, uh, you know, a lot of it, this is an insane industry, all right? People <laughs> are losing money. Somebody is making money somewhere. I use this analogy somewhere else. Any time in any industry when you see booms like this, you also see speculation and speculators. Yeah. People who come in along the edges and sell permits and do all kinds of other things, uh, Pardon me to all the attorneys because attorneys are wonderful people. Attorneys, consultants. You see, all these people dive in around the edges and make a lot of money. Right. Somebody's making money. It's not necessarily the people installing or developing the systems. Right. So uh, can it continue? Yeah, it's continued for 40 years. So, I mean, and some uh, people continued building in in countries, Spain, for example, long, long, long after it became perfectly obvious it was not profitable to do so. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of frightening. I'm, I, it's a little, it, it, it's very concerning to someone whose entire career is built on solar and it's going to stay here no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're out of time. All righty. Thanks, Paula. Great fun. See you Thanks, next Jim. week, everybody. Bye. Bye.